Testing, testing. Good morning. We'd like to welcome each of you to the First Seventh-day Adventist Church of Tulsa for our, our Sabbath school on this uh, brisk, beautiful morning uh, in the fall. We're thankful for God's great blessings even before Thanksgiving gets here, and we'd like to uh, start our services this morning with a prayer. Shall we bow our heads together? Those of you who are online and here, we'll, we'll do it together. Gracious Father, what a privilege it is to come into your house on Sabbath morning. Help us to enter with reverence and to know that your presence is here, your angels are here, and you want to meet with your people on your special day that you've set aside every week as a special gift to the human family for redemption, for sanctification. Help us to enjoy the precious moments and not let them slip away without the blessings you want to give us. Help us to seek your face. We do pray for our, our um, youth congress that's going over in the Moore Church, even the little Southwest uh, youth revival that's going over in the Claremore Church. We just pray that the spirit of revival and reform will take place in each of our hearts. Continue to guide in our services here today. And we thank you again for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. second song will be hymn number 221. Rejoice again. 
take the servants up to their eternal home. Lift up your heart, lift up your voice, rejoice again. I say, rejoice. Our scripture reading this morning comes from Psalms 18, verses 2 and 3. These are the words of the psalmist David, who we know was a man of war, and I can just picture him standing on the top of a mountain, just to the top of his voice, praising God with these words that were familiar to him. They were his language, but he used them to praise God. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower, meaning my place of safety, my refuge, a shield to me. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. And may the Lord's praise ever be on our lips throughout this day. So we're glad to have you here. Uh, our mission uh, emphasis for this quarter is the uh, Northern Asia Pacific Division. Uh, and you can see the uh, map there at the top that shows uh, Japan, South Korea, Mongolia, and Taiwan, which are areas that there are big challenges to uh, reaching out in these areas because many of these people are not Christians, nor have they ever uh, even been familiar with the Christian way of life. So, uh, some big challenges. Our video today is not from this area. Our video today is a little reminiscence about uh, uh, some work in the nation of the Congo. <laughs> Rick, we're thinking about that visit many years ago to Kinshasa in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, West Africa. That was quite a trip. It was. It was my first time to visit that country, and so it was eye-opening. Well, Kinshasa, you're looking at 17 million people and growing rapidly, and it seemed like every one of them was out on the street when we drove in from the airport. Just an active, vibrant, happening city, and there we have global mission pioneers through the years have been planting churches. Yes, I, I remember going into the city and seeing lorries or trucks filled with people in the back. That was the transportation into the city. And so it was a huge challenge. You got a small number of global mission pioneers trying to reach a large number of people. Yeah, so we were there for the global mission pioneer training. And I'll never forget the person who really stands out to me, of course, was Pastor Jeremiah, former global mission pioneer who was leading the singing for the event. He was so vibrant, so enthusiastic, had such a wonderful story. You suggested we take him out on the street so that we could film him in action. Yeah, so we went out right in front of the church and, and set up right there and he started playing music and immediately he had a crowd. And of course, his personality is so infectious. He's just so uh, you know, vibrant and, and just has this life about him that people are just drawn to it, I think, even without the music. And he had his two little kids with him, uh, Benji and Josie. And Josie had been really sick. She'd had malaria. She also had ulcers up on her leg. And so she doesn't look overly happy in the video, but she sang and they had walked two hours to come to the event and that evening saturday evening they were heading back another two hours walking back home yeah no i'd, I'd forgotten that they'd walked two hours but 
I think that's often the case in many of those areas of the world. What I do remember though is all the children that gathered around when he started singing and playing. We had a crowd. Yeah, well, I remember several years later walking down the corridor at the General Conference and I heard the same song that we had recorded Pastor Jeremiah playing and singing. And I poked my head into Ricky Oliveris's office. He's our video producer and he was editing. And sure enough, there was Pastor Jeremiah. Um, Ricky knew him as Pastor Lobo. I don't know, Pat, maybe it's Pastor Jeremiah Lobo, but there he was with his family. We knew him with two kids and a one month old baby at home. But now the, now the family had grown church growth and he was still ministering like he has through the years. It was just wonderful to see it. We come today, we pray, we praise our Lord Jesus Christ. And what's great about that one is that these little homemade trumpets. That's right. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, global mission pioneers uh, such as Pastor Jeremiah are working all around the world. Thanks for your prayers, for your financial support. They're planting churches in places we didn't know we could plant churches in very difficult circumstances. And whenever I meet a global mission pioneer living on a basic living stipend, I am I'm just humble because I say, Lord, I don't know what sacrifice is. So please continue to pray for global mission pioneers, pioneering the gospel around the world. Like Jesus, I have to continue because we have the mission to go, to spread abroad of good news of Jesus Christ. Good morning and happy Sabbath. You all sound, sound very happy this Sabbath. Can we try this again? You online as well, I want to hear you. Good morning and happy Sabbath. We're getting there, we're getting there. So this, um, this mission story, what a blessing. What a blessing, the global mission training, the pioneers to go there and do that. And Pastor Jeremiah, as I was listening to it, I just thought about what would it be like if we just went outside our church doors and started singing and started sharing the gospel right outside here in Tulsa. Sometimes we think about going other places, other, but we can do that right here as well. But that's not the emphasis, it's the emphasis to help give to the Global Mission Pioneers. So we want to remember that. Some people, they said they walked two hours to get to church. Can you imagine that, walking two hours? But we do what we want to do to be able to be with our God and praise Him. So let's think about that as we go forward this morning with our Sabbath school. I'd like to um, invite those who want to, to join the small group in, this, in the um, boardroom to my left, your right, and those who want to stay in the sanctuary um, to, be, uh, to listen to this distinguished panel. We have uh, uh, Dr. Miller, Dr. Roberts, and Dr. Davison this morning. We're so glad that you all are here with us. <laughs> Um, I can't, no. I can't hear you through the microphone. Okay, not through the microphone. Did you turn it on? There we go. There we go. It all <laughs> <laughs> We got lights. Say something, doctor. Testing, testing. We can hear you now. We can hear you now. You can hear me now. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. All right. Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Sabbath School. So good to have you here. Uh, before we got started in our lesson, there was uh, there was a resource that has been such a blessing to us Some feedback. that uh, I thought I might share with you. And uh, so, you know, in this day and age, you know, it's amazing. This can be your uh, your Bible and all of your Spirit of Prophecy books. Yes. And uh, you can have a lot of things at your photo album, at your camera. It's everything. Yes, sir. And, uh, but one of the things that uh, our daughter shared with us was that the, there is a, an app that you can download onto your electronic devices. And those electronic devices can, uh, 
Be a distraction. Is that better? Is that be, better? A di be a distraction. Right yeah. So anyway, that uh, this app is a, is actual. There's quite a few different apps you can download. It says Sabbath School. That's right. But this one is a Sabbath School PM, I think it says, which mm -hmm. means Sabbath School and Personal Ministries. And it's the official one the General Conference uh, Sabbath School Department puts out. <coughs> and with that little app, we notice that. Uh, you can not only uh, get a chance to read your quarterly, but if you're teaching, it also has the teacher's notes. Mm -hmm. And then if you like, well, you know, uh, the Pacific Press comes out with a little book that we've gotten in paper uh, with the Ellen G. White commentary on each day yeah. that you can have. And we don't, uh, the, of the special gifts the church provides as a special gift to everybody every quarter is a quarterly. But that does not include that particular little document as well. But some of you that are interested would have this available as well for free. And not only do you get that, but you'd also have, if you say, well, you know, I'm having a hard time reading today, mm -hmm. or I'm too tired, or I'm too busy, and I just like to listen to it while I'm traveling. Yeah. Well, you can hit the little button that says uh, audio, and it will have a nice voice read it to you. Uh, both of those as you're going down the road. Mm -hmm. And then it also is equipped with if you want to say, well, I'd like to hear the mission story for today, and they'll read yep. that to you. So the weekly, and it's in your quarter, the little mission report. So it is a service that, uh, you know, some of these electronic wonders, as we know, can be a help, even though, as you know, just like whether it's uh, computers or, or smartphones or, TV. or TVs, highway or money, they could be used by the missionaries or the mafia. But, you know, we can use them for good purposes. <laughs> and so uh, we'll want to be the kind that would use whatever resources we have to advance his kingdom. Amen. So as we begin this morning, Brother Josh, why don't you pray that that Holy Spirit, because, you know, it says, I read a verse where it says, without him we can't do anything. And that includes share something from the word mm -hmm. especially. Amen mm -hmm. to that. Dear Lord, thank you for allowing us to be here today. I pray that you be with us. I pray you put a guiding hand on us and... Uh, Give us the strength, the courage, the words to speak throughout our days, and give us the ability to understand uh, both your law, your grace, and all your teachings of love. Um, dear Lord, I just continue to pray that you are with us always. In your name, amen. 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 You know, when uh, Brother Josh shared his prayer, I noticed he mentioned two particular words. He mentioned the word law. He also mentioned the word grace. Mm -hmm. And I see in our memory verse this week, looks like they mentioned the word grace and they mentioned the word law in there. And I, I can't help it. It always brings me back to a patient I had one time from Florida who had been a highway patrolman. And uh, he, he had been a highway patrolman and saw all kinds of stuff on the road. But then when he had a heart attack and he just about died, mm. he decided to... Um, maybe leave his occupation as a highway patrolman and become a Baptist pastor. Wow. <laughs> and he started this church, and it was down at his church we were speaking one time and so forth that he had us come back down there to do a health program at his church. But anyway, in the process, I remember he used to say, well, you know, I've been in law enforcement, and then I became a pastor, so I changed from law to grace. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, that's not exactly the way most people use those two words. Right. But we definitely will be uh, discussing that. And sometimes the idea, you know, there's various ideas that the enemy would say, now, if, if it's by grace, you know, that we're saved, boy, I want to keep people from understanding what's going on there, you know, mm. and I want to get them on the wrong track. So... Before we uh, go any further, Brother James, why don't you share with us our memory verse for this week? Or if sure. you want to just do it from memory, you could. Yeah, uh, it's a different version. So okay. I'm going to use there are version. a lot of choices. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Galatians uh, two twenty one says, "I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain." Mm -hmm. Galatians New, two and verse twenty one. Yeah. There we go. New, New King James, James version. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So all right, so. Again, Paul, in trying to find that balancing picture, you know, you can see, I remember reading a passage one time where it had described the time in earth's history when Jesus came where we were just about as low down the totem mm. pole as we could fall. Right. The devil had just drug everybody down the mud, so to speak. And um, it says at that time, <clears throat> every heathen religion had this doctrine pretty well entrenched that man could somehow be saved by his own merits. Yeah, mercy. And it says at that point in time, uh, God's chosen people had also fallen into that camp, mm -hmm. but they thought somehow what they did yeah. 
would merit their salvation by keeping that law just right, you know. But unfortunately, uh, you know, Jesus had to come and sort of straighten out a little bit of that kind of thinking. Mm -hmm. He tried hard. Yeah. And it was not accepted totally, as you remember the story. That's right. So, so we, we can be grateful, though, that even today there are people who do talk about, unfortunately, in, in our time, it's not uncommon if people say, oh, that law was done away with. It was all nailed to the cross. Forget law. We had grace. Mm -hmm. You know, you can see how that uh, tendency is a problem, isn't it, Josh? I actually kind of want to bring it up as for the first introduction here. You're, you, you mentioned it, the first yeah. introduction. Christians yeah. in most denominations talk about <clears throat> law and grace. But many believe the law is not wholly just and good. Absolutely. Nailed to the and cross. <laughs> it's, it's interesting because, like what well, you just said, I've seen a lot of places, they they want grace. Mm -hmm. They yeah. want a lot of grace. Isn't right? that a church it's called that the grace, grace place? <laughs> it's that grace teaching. Uh -huh. And I always go back to that one quote that was made, and I wish I could remember who said it, and I wish I could say it correctly, but it was, uh, the greatest single cause of atheism in the world today is Christians. Mm, yeah. Because they go into wow. the church praising Jesus, wow. but then they leave the church denying it by their lifestyles. That's mm. very interesting. And a lot of those statement. grace churches I've seen mm -hmm. is just that. Mm -hmm. They don't follow the law, but yeah. they want the grace. I think sometimes some have referred to that as cheap grace, mm -hmm. meaning this is grace. Yes, we do think we didn't merit the favor he gave us. We, we have been bathed with blessings, but uh, if we don't take it beyond that and realize, hey, he also has enabling grace that'll give us power to keep the law, or he wouldn't have asked us to be law keepers. That's right. If you yeah. love me, keep my commandments. You're right. But yeah. unfortunately, from above. just just jump into it. Yeah, uh, we're, we're against a wily foe, and he actually plays... He's tricky. Yes, <laughs> and uh, he plays, plays both sides. He does. We, uh, there are a lot of people who are in favor of justice, too. Uh -huh. As long as it applies to you, you know. So, <laughs> so the thing of it is, is that uh, you know we just have to be mindful that oh, you know we need a, a savior at every point with regard to <clears throat> grace <throat> and without with regard to our justice. I, you know, I, I think inspiration has been so kind to help yes. us with a lot of, of emphasis and picture of showing us here's uh, the, the the biggest the biggest uh, quote um, organization in the world that even professes Christianity you know, has as one of its tenets that where inspiration tells us pretty well brings in the whole world mm -hmm. and makes it appealing to it, is one false doctrine that says you could be saved by your merits. Mm -hmm. And the other false doctrine is you could be saved in your sins. Mm -hmm. So either one of those might appeal to certain groups, you know, whichever ditch you want, take your pick, and we can take in nearly the whole world under those. And so you could see there's, there's a danger Seventh Adventists could fall into one of the other of those ditches as well. And so it's only, I think, by God's Holy Spirit power that anyone could find where's that middle road that would take God's grace and be able to put it together. So law and grace, law on one hand and grace on the other. That's our introduction. I kind of like how that image looks a little bit like a scale. It looks like the law is what's holding <laughs> you down and humble, <laughs> but then the, the prayer and the grace is what's lifting you up. Yeah, I kind of right. like that image. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and you could see uh, a lot of people wouldn't have problem with God's Ten Commandments. I mean, there's a lot of places, even some some states like Alabama, where they had the Ten Commandments right out there in the state capitol. And right. Of course, some of that. Let's get that out of the way quick. You know? right. right. But you could see a lot of people think it's good for for states to say, protect us from each other killing each other or mm -hmm. stealing from each other or mm -hmm. you know just wanting uh, lawlessness. So you'd think, boy, you know, uh, there needs to be a law, it yeah. seems, of some sort. Yeah, like I said, even on the screen, there was a law in heaven. There was a law in heaven. Yeah. Tell us about that. Yeah. Was there a law in heaven before humans were created? The answer, God is a God of love, and love is the overarching principle of his character and the foundation of his government, because God wants us to love him in return. He has created us as moral creatures with moral freedom to obey or disobey the freedom inherent in love. And so it's uh, kind of given us, there was, there was a law in heaven. Yeah, you know, absolutely, the thought strange. that there was a law in heaven, I got the idea that even the angels, it was so, in, it was so embedded in the way they, they just mm -hmm. did what God wanted them to. Right. They didn't realize, oh, we were keeping your law. <laughs> mm. And I think that was kind of how it was. Yeah. So why don't you share that with us, Josh, that uh, uh, 28, 15, and 16. Right. Ezekiel 28, 15 through 16 says, you were blameless in your ways from the day you were created till wickedness was found in you. 
Through your widespread trade, you were filled with violence and you sinned. So I drove you in disgrace from the mount of God, and I expelled you, guardian, guardian cherub, from among the fiery stones. There's the picture again of Lucifer in heaven, and how could you know that a person had wickedness if there was no law to compare with, to identify? If sin is a transgression of a law and wickedness is sin, mm -hmm. it's clear that there was some sort of uh, standard that heaven had. Oh, I actually like this verse. Go for that one too, mm -hmm. Josh. All right. <laughs> what shall we say then? Is the law sin? Certainly not. On the contrary, I would not have known sin mm -hmm. except through the law. Mm -hmm. For I would have not known covetousness unless the law had said, you shall not covet. Mm -hmm. So it goes what we're saying. You know, you would not know what that sin was unless somebody told you, this is a sin. <laughs> you know, it, it's kind of like uh, even with your kids and yeah. stuff like that. Um, I don't have any kids yet, but, you know, I, I learned my lessons as a child. If I really loved my parents, I wouldn't do opposite of what they told me. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and I'd, I'd receive some form of punishment if mm -hmm. I did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So out of love, we learn that there is, there is a punishment. There is law. Yeah. yeah. But out of love, when we follow it, we receive even more of the grace, which is mm -hmm. quite an interesting thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. So laws are needed, that's mm -hmm. for sure. And when you see what happened even in uh, 17th century uh, France when uh, anarchy took the streets mm -hmm. and, and, and the, the guillotine was running and there's all kinds of terrible atrocities took place yeah. when they're, when the, you know, we'll just use reason. We don't have to have a law. Let's throw out the religious yeah. part and everything. And along with it, unfortunately, most people don't realize that some of the blessings this country has received was because of people where the blood of the martyrs during the Dark Ages played into people coming to a new land where they could have this sense of civil and religious oh, yeah, liberty. It actually started yeah. over in the Netherlands when they started writing, actually quoting scripture from the Bible and became, becoming mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. founding documents that created mm -hmm. our Constitution, yeah, our absolutely. Declaration of Independence. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't think people realize that at the same time. You can see how the enemy, as he's attempting to push the law aside, God created these moral beings. He established a moral law that governed them. This law is valid both in heaven and on oh, earth. Yeah. This law is a transcript of his character. Existed before that. It's, that's what he, he, he's, he has his law, that law of love that is the foundation of his throne. He wants to write on our hearts. That's the story. Okay. Um, I was, um, my mind was wandering there and as you were speaking. You know, Psalms 19, uh, it's still, we remember in Psalms 19, verse 7, the law of the Lord is perfect, mm -hmm. converting the soul. Uh, the testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise and simple. Uh, making wise and simple, you know, it, that's very succinct but powerful when you think about it, that the law of God has the ability to change Absolutely. you. And, and not change you in a bad way, but change in a way that can help you as a human being, you know, as a created human being. It's amazing. One of yeah. the most beautiful poems in the whole world is right there in the center of the Bible. That's Psalm 119, where every verse yes. touches a law, statutes, right. your commitments. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, but it's trying to I tell delight yeah. myself. Yeah. Yeah. There's statutes. everything. And so to think, I, I delight in your law day and night. And I, it finally dawned on me, uh, well, you know, uh, we need to spend more time with it. Now you can see why yeah. the enemy says, let's get them away from that book yeah, right. if we can. Right. So love God with your whole being and love yes. others as you love yourself. That's the great commandment Jesus sort of made clear. Yeah. Satan first sin in heaven to the sinless beings of heaven. The very idea of the law was at first an unusual concept since it was imprinted as part of every thought and behavior. Mm. So That's actually one thing that separates us from the angels is that for them it was imprinted. They didn't have to necessarily learn it. They followed mm -hmm. it because it was something that they knew they had to do. Mm -hmm from their very creation. And I guess Adam and Eve kind of had that same sort of start that they could have chosen to stay on the good path and that law could have pulled them if they hadn't have said, well, no, I think maybe I could listen to this rascal. Well, I think it was imprinted on them. Don't you think it was imprinted on them as well? 
Adam and Eve had it on. I mean, I'm talking about the angels. Oh, yeah. Don't you think they? Yeah, had the it? angels had well, that's it. That's what I'm saying. The angels had it imprinted oh. from their very creation. Oh, okay. And they still had a choice, just like Lucifer yeah. had a choice. He could yeah. say, "Well, I'm going to choose to have my own thoughts." Yeah, they God appealed to him not to yeah. uh, go that yeah. way. Okay, we're. <laughs> it's okay. I just want. <laughs> we're together. On yeah, this. we're together on this. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The, here, so the law in Deuteronomy, this whole idea that this whole whole quarter's lessons have been on Deuteronomy and mm -hmm. learning lessons from the book. And he's, yeah. he's done a good job of pulling some amazing stories out. It you? is. And, and you know, the thing about it is we often think of the law, or even think about the Old Testament, that there are those who say there was... I'm a New th Testament Christian. Yeah, I'm a New Testament. And there was no, really no... Some people say there wasn't much, there wasn't grace. Grace didn't exist until the New Testament, which is ludicrous when you think about... You know, that's, you start from Adam. That oh, there was a Jesus lot had. of yeah. grace in the Old Testament. Yeah, but I mean, oh, sometimes <laughs> people tend to think that it only, yeah. and I guess I kind of got that from the lesson also that right. when Christ was crucified, that was the beginning of a grace. But I think that was a consummation of grace, you know, that right. everything was paid for. The blood was offered, you know, so, the shedding of blood. So anyway. So you can see here as, as Moses stood on the yeah. promise, borders of the promised land, he was getting ready to say, okay, we're going in, but, yeah. you know, we need to, there's some Something that, that's going to be the foundation of your life over there, and it's going to be my law. Mm -hmm. I'm going to write it on your heart, but you need to keep these commands. And he went right through, and he gave some of them here for us. So, um, why don't you read that for us, Josh? And it shall be with him, and he shall read it all the days of his life, that he may learn to fear the Lord his God, and be careful to observe all the words of his law. And these statutes. So it didn't sound like he was pushing the law aside, did it? <laughs> no. It's interesting because that verse also kind of mirrored uh, Psalms 119, 9 through 16, which is one of my favorite little pieces oh, of Psalms. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It actually kind of mirrored that. Yeah. And it, yeah. You'll have to read that sometime. It's very yeah. good. And then uh, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 28, 58. If you do not carefully observe all the words of this law that are written in this book, that you may fear the glorious and awesome name, the Lord your God. Mm. Yeah. Like, in other words, this is your goal, is to keep God's fear in mind, and reading yeah. his law is mm -hmm. the way that's going to bring you to me. Yeah. 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 Deuteronomy 30, 10 says, If you obey the voice of the Lord your God, to keep his commandments and his statutes, which are written in the book of the law, and if you, ret and if you turn to the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, um, I thought it was something else. Gather the people together, men and women and little ones and the strangers who are within your gates, that they may hear and that they may learn to fear the Lord your God and carefully observe all the words of his law. You could see God so he, wasn't yeah. limiting it just to the old folks. Yeah. Get the little ones too. He wasn't limiting it to just the, just the Jewish people. Right. Hey, there's, there's foreigners, the immigrants, the strangers, right. the... Illegal aliens, you right. know. That's <laughs> can right. Share it with all of them. That's right. All of creation. What? Yeah. And he said to them, Set your hearts on all the words which I testify among you today, which you shall command your children to be careful to observe all the words of this law. So again, what you're saying, he's echoing again. It's, it's, uh, we spoke about covenant a few uh, quarters ago. Uh, God is uh, renewing the covenant, or, or actually the law is being given again as well, and he's expressing parts of the covenant to, to express his love and his desire to serve these people and the world is, is, is what I'm trying to get You can at. see even, you know, for ancient mm -hmm. Israel that had wandered 40 years, mm -hmm. and most of those mamas and daddies had their tombstones out there in the wilderness. Right, right. And uh, so we got a whole group of little ones that need to hear this too. Is yeah. part of the story, and the same could be true for Seventh Adventists. That you know, here some of those early teenagers that were praying earnestly, mm -hmm. like the Hiram, Hiram Edson and the, and the Ellen Whites and the James Whites and the Loughboroughs and some of those folks, mm -hmm. that just knew that God had a work for them to do, mm -hmm. that fire was in their bones. You know, that right. uh, here within 11 years, Jay and Andrews and his, it, we're doing foreign mission. This is a message that needs to go to the world. We just have a fledgling group, but you know. And don't think that after a few generations, we have had several people who've gone to their cemetery who believe this, who now have children and grandchildren that maybe have kind of lost some of that enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, yeah. I was just thinking, too, as you were speaking there about them in the wilderness. You know, remember a couple of weeks ago we talked about it, it was an 11-day journey. 
11 days. <laughs> that took them 40 years. Yeah. And, and so, but it, we, we, we smirk at it, yeah. but it just says who we are as human beings. We're kind of thick, we can't always, yeah. it takes yeah. us a while to get, don't look at me like that, I'm just saying, I'm not talking about you, I'm just talking about us as human beings. I didn't know I looked at we, you we anyway. Don't always, huh? I didn't know I looked at you anyway until I said <laughs> anyway, it, I'm like, was, But 11 years, I mean 11, 11, days, 11 days versus 40 years, years. Yeah. we just can't just look at them, it's the same with us, God help us, you know, that we can hurry up and get with, right. what, get, get with God's plan and realize right. What the law and the love is all about. Well, it, it, you know, it kind of appears in some ways in our own history that, you know, in 1888 when God sent special messages mm -hmm. to get his people to take this law of grace yes. and don't just preach the law till it's become as dry as the hills of Gilboa with no dew <laughs> rain, like he said for four years we preached yeah. it, but we didn't have Christ at the center. Like that right. grace part was a little bit lacking, like we'd fallen into that ditch. Yeah, Lord help so us. God was trying to pull us in, and then if they would have taken that message, he said in the early 1890s, God could have come ere this. Yeah. But when we didn't, I got the clear picture, you're going to get to wander in the wilderness just like they did. Yeah. And so some believe now, well, what is near 130 years since that era yeah. that we've been wondering, you think it only took them 40. <laughs> we get worse. So it takes yeah. us longer. So, so we don't know how soon, but it appears that God's purposes, which know no haste and no delay, they're right. going to happen whether we're yeah. going to be part of the boat or not. That's but it also happen. expresses, I'm sorry, it also expressed the long suffering of God oh, with this people. Go ahead, Josh. I'm sorry. You know, we, we have the uh, summary right here, and I really like what it says. Uh, first off, Moses in Deuteronomy stressed how necessary obeying the law is. Mm -hmm. The law is an important part of the covenant. Absolutely. But I, I'm going to summarize that one a little bit shorter than what it is there. He still gave them an exit out of Egypt. He still gave them yes. the promised land. Mm -hmm. Even though he knew they were going to fail, even though he knew they were mm -hmm. going to make multiple mistakes even yeah. with more time yeah. gives more chances to error mm -hmm. you know if you put somebody on a strict schedule they can finish real quickly because you know they have to pay attention but mm -hmm. if you give them six months to do something that takes six days <laughs> yeah. they're going to make m multiple mistakes they're going to yeah. lose yeah. things they're right. going to backpedal mm -hmm. they're going to forget mm -hmm. so more time mm -hmm. gives more chances for error mm -hmm. and yet god didn't give them this because of their mm -hmm. works mm -hmm because he obviously knew they were going to make mistakes. Sure. And yet he knew by giving them more time, they're going to make even more. Mm -hmm. He still gave it to them. Yeah. yeah. He was upholding yeah. his part of the covenant. You know? Holding, upholding you know, his part you, of the covenant. Just because exactly. you mess up doesn't mean Out of guys, love. Huh? All out of love. <laughs> yeah. All out of love. Yeah. So he's talking about Bill Peor here. That was a good, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That, that was terrible. good. You could see how, yeah. how there. Moses in Deuteronomy stressed how necessary Obeying the whole law is. The law mm -hmm. is an important part of the covenant, yeah. Yeah. So uh, it wasn't because they were obedient that he took them out. Right. But uh, you can see he did it for love. This is the grace in the book of Deuteronomy. Mm -hmm. That idea, most people don't see uh, God as the God of grace in the Old Testament so much, but that's absolutely a mistake. You're right. It is. This obedience arises from our covenant relationship with him. You know, we had a whole quarter on the covenants, but to know this, God never broke his part of the deal. It was just like the one that was always falling off the wagon was the human part. Dear Lord, have mercy. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. I never had been familiar with that Hebrew expression, oh, like off lock. It is for your good. Yeah. You can see a little how a mother could tell his child that. You know, we put this fence in the yard here so you wouldn't get out in the road. You may yeah. feel like it's restrictive somehow. Right. <laughs> But it's for your good. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think about, you know, our, our, in our generation, even today, you know, even current events, you know, um, and, and not to step on toes, but anyway, I'm just thinking, we're such a rebellious society mm. here in America. Mm. I mean, we, we, we don't like, and, and we even have to watch ourselves as Christians, as Protestant Christians. We, 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 we're not for anything. <laughs> anything. We just have to be careful about uh, what type of ambassadors we are. are. Are we representing God or are we, are we against everything that comes down the pike from any source? Mm -hmm. I, I don't think God is asking us to do that. He's asking us to be ambassadors of him. Mm -hmm. Ambassadors are going to be mocked and ridiculed, mm -hmm. but you're still to represent Christ yeah. with whatever comes our way. And, and, you know, uh, and I'll just touch on that, even with regard to, uh, someone said to me this week, if God himself said, 
for folk to get vaccinated, that would be a protest. And, and I know that all of us aren't in favor of the vaccine. But anyway, I'm just saying, we just have to be careful about complaining and, and protesting about things, uh, if he's a Republican or if he's a Democrat. We, we can't get caught up in all that foolishness, folks. If you are an ambassador for Christ, yeah. we gotta let that foolishness go. Because our, our goal is beyond that. My goal is to be a brother to you, a sister to you, to uphold Jesus Christ and to, and to press together so that we all can get in God's kingdom. Right. And yeah. we often lose sight of that. And, and, and if you love me, you know, Keep my bidding on, keep my That's right. Yeah, so anyway, I just got off on that. And I think this is what happened to ancient Israel. They lost sight of God too easily, especially at Bill Peor. The main thing I lost its fact of being the main thing. <laughs> right, yeah. What about Jesus? What would you, they used to have the same WWJD. What would Jesus do? You know, Jesus would probably say, oh, it's all right, it's not, it'll, it'll be all right. Let's just see what happens, you know. So anyway. Right. Anyway, you could see if Moses had some, some memories of the past yes. where he got invited up. And, you know, it's interesting that God gave his law. He didn't do it in the, in the most populous nation of the world in Egypt where, you know, we can put it on the mainstream TV or whatever. Mm -hmm. he, uh, he took those people out into the, to a wilderness area. There wasn't any country out there, basically. <laughs> and he gave his law, which kind of gave you that. This is for the whole world, too. Right. You know? That's everybody right. Everybody should have this. That's right. Forty days yeah. and forty nights. Don't you think that Moses had strong memories even yeah. uh, forty years later about his time up in the mountain? Forty days and forty years where God gave him that law, and then he had to remember throw it down and give them a signal yeah. that uh, hey, this is uh, you guys broke this law when you fell off the bandwagon while we were up there praying. And of all times, here God and Moses were on such serious times, and they got so tuned into the world or it was still so embedded in their lives that that he had to throw the Ten Commandments down and he went back and spent another 40 days up there and I uh, got the, the final copy that apparently says and I put that in the box here we've got it still in the ark mm -hmm. I guess it wasn't the box that was so important it was someone I think it was Doug Batcher said it's the rocks in the box that's mm -hmm. more important than mm -hmm. what uh, the box was mm -hmm. So anyway, and there was that we might be a prosperous people. Um, I think it's probably the next slide. You know, God gave us these laws and, and these instructions that we might be a prosperous people. And then as we are blessed, then we're to uh, sh share the blessings with those with whom we meet uh, in the family and then to the world. I think it's the next slide, Dr. Carrico, that talks about. So key, we, yeah, of course, you can see there, keeping the next those one. commandments, he has to help us be those commandment yeah. keepers. Mm -hmm. I kind of ran ahead, sorry. And see, what, what I like about this particular uh, lesson for Tuesday, what I like about it is, you know, there's a lot of emphasis on you or your walk, basically. Yes. And yeah. what I like about that is because oftentimes, you know, people get judged by their mistakes. Yeah. People get judged by, you know, that, that weakest area of their life. And mm -hmm. when you look at a Christian church as a whole, or if you look at God's people in any way, you say, well, this Christian did this. So you have those people that judge the entire church off of that one. That's right. So if each individual person is doing their best, is doing their part, they are representing the church as a whole. Because when someone says, you know, you are like this, wait a second, are other Christians like that? Because this is good. Mm -hmm. But if they say you are like that, and that is wrong, well, right. then the rest of the church must be the same way because you believe that way. Yeah. So it's a very interesting thing because you have to put that on your shoulders in some way and say, I need to be a good representative. That's right. right. I remember reading a passage where inspiration mm -hmm. mentions, you know, it's not so much what the preacher says up front. He mm -hmm. can say whatever he wants, read the fine, <laughs> you know, the letter of the law. Yeah. But it's, it's what the people are doing that everybody's paying attention to. Right. Like the life and the lip aren't lined up somehow, or the yeah, walk and happens? the talk, or, you know, the, you know what I'm saying, where what you're saying and what you're doing can yeah. somehow matches. And that's where God's grace has to happen, because without Him, we and can't you know, do it. And, you know, God, God is always telling everyone as a collective whole. I mean, we, we go back to John 3, 16. I mean, because mm -hmm. He loved the entire world. Mm -hmm. Not one piece of it, not one nation, the entire world. Mm -hmm. So he's telling everybody this. And even back in Deuteronomy, he's saying, as if talking to everyone there individually, 
all at the same time. Mm -hmm. Every last person, you, 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 all of you. This, this is what you need to do. And that was what was so interesting about it. I, I really liked that lesson because it points that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this idea, so that you may prosper, this whole notion that it's for your good. Don't think that we're doing this just to be arbitrary. Right, right. There's a reason for this. And the thing with it is, I you talked about seeing one individual and judging that, that judge that person as Christian. You know, when that comes to us, then our, our, our position is not to defend what that person is. You know, I think we should all, if someone comes to us like that, uh, the first thing we should do is apologize to them and, and, and tell them, you know, uh, and, and not to try to cover it up and, and just, because I think as Christians, we have to always remember we're all at different stages in our Christian yes. walk. Yes. And we, so we've embraced some things as Christians and, and some haven't. And so we, and, then, and so what my point is, is that when we are accused of, a, a person is accused of not being Christian, then I, my response is always, well, I'm sorry that that happened. You know what I mean? Apologize to them. Uh, I think, and then say, and then go to Christ. I think Christ would have been a little bit more gracious. And so, the, as opposed to saying, you know, uh, oh, I don't believe he did that, and, you know, be defensive about it. You, let's learn how to be gracious about these things and so that we can win people as opposed to. You know, they said pictures them. worth a thousand words, and, you know, you can see in our little illustration on yeah. the screen there this picture of God's Ten Commandment law. And then you can see this is a law of love, that mm -hmm. heart cut out of the middle. This is for your best good. Yes, you know, yeah. This is good for you. That How about that? God loves and he asks for love. The law is like a protective fence along the high and perilous path, keeps us from straying into fatal mistakes. It caters to our best interests, teaches us how to have a healthy relationship with God and our neighbor mm -hmm. for our own good. Amen. You can see what would happen if everybody, even in Tulsa, yeah. really thought that was a great idea. Amen. You wouldn't hear, oh, they just had a killing over on the, oh, they just had another, oh, they had some, yeah. oh, you know what I'm saying? Right. And unfortunately, we're, we're not known to have the least crime in our own city. I here. know. We're not too far away from some troublous times, big right. time. Right. But we can still be Christians even in trouble. We can be trouble. salt and light. I think yeah, this version yeah. gives you the idea that if it weren't for the Christians that were there, mm -hmm. even their saving influence has kept God's destructive judgments, you know, from mm -hmm. falling. Yeah, you said it real quickly, but I'm going to say it for salt, because you, you, you took the words out of my mouth. We're to be the salt of the earth. And salt so earth. no matter if there's a lot of killing, we can still be salt mm -hmm. and we can still be Help the light of the world. Season. Season That's the right. Because someone, there are a lot of hurting people in this world mm -hmm. and someone is looking for a way and God calls us to, to be light. So this is the way for us to go. You know, let's yeah. not do this. Yeah. And let's All do right. That. So there we go, deliverance from slavery. Mm -hmm. You know, that's interesting how there was people for, can you imagine 400 years that mm. the Jewish people were, were uh, living there in Egypt? And I'm not sure how many of those actually they were under the, after Joseph was gone, it didn't take long apparently. Right. The generation has arisen that knows not Joseph and the slavery came upon them. Right. And they thought, man, look at all these folks out here. We could put them to work and <laughs> turn mm -hmm. this into a productive country. Right. Yeah, we can build some nice palaces for yes, us, yeah. whatever, pyramids. Right. right. <laughs> so here we are. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, this famous law that uh, we all know. And this, of course, the word Deuteronomy kind of mm -hmm. gives you that. The second Take giving it. of the law, like Exodus 20 was number one. And then we think of Deuteronomy 5 as kind of number two. Mm -hmm. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image, mm. any likeness of anything that's in heaven above or in the earth beneath or that's in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down mm -hmm. to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and the fourth generations of those who hate me, but show mercy, mercy to thousands to those mm -hmm. who love me mm -hmm. and keep, keep my, my commandments. commandments. And then, of course, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Mm -hmm. And then observe the Sabbath day to keep it holy as the Lord your God commanded you. Six days you shall labor and do your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it, you shall do no work. Uh, you, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your ox 
we might say, or your tractor today, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or your donkey, or any of your cattle, mm -hmm. or your stranger who's within your gates, that your male servant and your female servant may rest as well as you. Yeah. And remember, here's where the remember word comes into yes. this commandment. Again. That you were a slave mm -hmm. in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God brought you out from there by a mighty hand, mm -hmm. by an outstretched arm. Mm -hmm. like you couldn't have done that by yourself to get right. you off that hook. You were under slavery, the thumb of slavery. Therefore, the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. So there was a kind of portrays again that picture of, right. of why that this was a an act of redemption. I redeemed you. Yes. And then, of course, when it was first given there in Genesis 2, it was clearly a picture of I sanctified this day as a day of rest to remember the creation. You can remember the creator, remember who made you. Mm -hmm. So an act of sanctification, act of redemption, all packaged in the same day for us. Mm -hmm. What a blessing. Honor your father and your mother as the Lord your God's commanded you so that your days may be long, mm -hmm. that it may be well with you in the land which the Lord your God's given you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not. You shall not bear false witness against mm -hmm. your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his house or his field, his servants, his ox, his donkey, or anything that your neighbor's. His Lexus now. You know what? Yeah. <laughs> These words the Lord spoke to all your assembly in the mountain from the midst of the fire, the cloud, and the and the thick darkness with a loud voice. And he added no more. And he wrote them on two tablets of stone and gave them to me. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. You spoke about like this is a personal testimony he's sharing here right. what we went through. But it's also one of love too. Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Great love for him. So there you can see. Why don't you share that with us, Josh? When Moses reminded the Israelites about the Ten Commandments, he approached the fourth one in a new way, emphasizing God as the redeemer instead of the creator. Mm -hmm. God didn't redeem Israel from Egypt because they were righteous, but because he loved them. He gave them grace. Mm -hmm. Once we are redeemed, he asks us to respond to his grace by keeping the law. Some of you might say that's the least we can do. <laughs> <laughs> it's something we struggle with doing. Yeah. Well, that's it's the right. least we can do in the sense that in terms of, of he, him asking, and only, of course, the reason we struggle too is, is sometimes we realize our, our natural inclination takes us this way. I remember... Uh, Someone, I think it's Ellen White mentioned, she said, duty and inclination run mm. side by side, like the law is our duty, but we're inclined to go another path. Lord so us. without, that's where, of course, the yeah, sin Jesus. problem has drug us off the trail, and, yeah. and that's where the grace help has to keep us, that enabling grace to keep us on the track. I kind of like these last two here because it says the law becomes mm -hmm. a response to God's redeeming yes. grace, not an agent of redemption. Mm, that's absolutely true. But I like the very last one here for a particular reason. Obeying the law Isn't is a right? way to tell others about God's grace in our lives. Mm -hmm. And this comes down to a more moral convictions and things like that. Mm -hmm. When you are living the law, mm -hmm. and people see that you are following that practice, mm -hmm. then you have higher morals, you have mm -hmm. more regard for yourself, you mm -hmm. have a higher sense of integrity, you have a better work ethic. There are a lot of things that start to go hand in hand. Absolutely. Yeah. And when they see these things, you following the law is actually a reflection of God's grace. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's very interesting to think of that. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, no, I think it's, yeah. that's exactly right. So. All right. We've made it to Thursday. <laughs> well, we're right. From the very beginning, God was always reaching out to Israel. Everything they had, including their new land, their crops, their homes, especially their righteousness, it all came from God. Right. Deuteronomy 9, 1 to 6. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's important for us to remember. All we have in our came the same place. <laughs> right, right. What is justification by faith? It is the work of God in laying the glory of man in the dust and doing for man that which it is not in his power to do for himself. When men see their own nothingness, they are prepared to, to be clothed with the righteousness of Christ. It's like we see, yeah. well, we really need what he has to offer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, can't, we can't cook it up on our own, can yeah. we? Yeah, yeah. We desperately need a savior. Mm -hmm. Why don't you share that with us there in Deuteronomy, uh, uh, Josh? Hear, O Israel, Israel, you are to cross over the Jordan today and go into Possess. Dispossess. Dis dispossesses. Dis dispossess. Dis dispossess. 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 Dispossess nations. Go ahead. <laughs> I could probably.
probably read it silently better. <laughs> uh, into dispossessed nations, greater and mightier than yourself, cities great and fortified up to heaven, a people great and tall, the descendants of the Anakim, mm -hmm. who you know and of whom you heard it is said, who can stand before the descendants of Anak? Therefore, understand today that the Lord your God is he who goes over before you uh, with a consuming fire. He will destroy them and bring them down before you, so you shall drive them out and destroy them quickly, as the Lord has said to you. Mm -hmm. Do not think in your heart after the Lord your God has cast them out before you, saying, because of my righteousness, mm -hmm. the Lord has brought me in to, the, to possess this land. But it is because of the wickedness of these nations that the Lord is driving them out from before you, and that he may fulfill the word which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Mm. Therefore, understand that the Lord your God is not giving you this good land to possess because of your righteousness, <laughs> for you are a stiff-necked a stiff people. Have yeah, mercy. <laughs> Wow. Do you think we could translate that into modern terms, even use the term a hard-headed people? Yeah. It couldn't be too far different, would it? Yeah. <laughs> Stubborn. Yeah. Stubborn, yeah. Uh, rebellious, yeah. headed the wrong way. Like you want to do your own thing. Yeah. Yeah. And um, unfortunately, some of them, I heard someone say, if you Google this expression in modern times, follow your heart. Mm. Boy, you get a lot of hits. Everybody thinks that's a good idea. Follow what wow. you want to do, you know, instead wow. of follow, what he, uh, follow his heart. Yeah, and what does the Bible say about the heart? It's this people above all things Desperate, are desperately weak. Desperately weak. Mm -hmm. Not good. Yeah, Don't wow. follow your heart. <laughs> yeah. so, mm -hmm. All right, Thursday summary. Who would like to share that? You want to share that, Brother, brother uh, James? Uh, God planned our salvation be before creating the first human being. Jesus had already died to save us. Before we did any, anything good, while we were sinners, there is no good deed we can do to obtain salvation. God has done everything needed to save us. The Lord has saved you by grace. Now with the law written in your heart and his spirit empowering you, go and obey his law. It's that, that other part, is that enabling grace, that spirit that empowers us. You know, yes. it's like, I'm afraid that's what sometimes the grace place might have left out was yeah. that sometimes it's almost like we're, you're saved by grace, but you can keep on living like the devil, you know. Sometimes it almost is the right. unspoken uh, between right. the lines. So you right. can see that God will save us. He, he doesn't put this robe of righteousness on us because we are, um, we want to cover up all that nasty stuff. Yeah. He says, I'm going to clean the nasty stuff so you'll be a fit candidate for heaven too. You know, mm -hmm. I don't, uh, we don't bring crooks in here. Right, right. I was actually, I was actually wanting to kind of read this text you right please, here please because I was, I was reading it on my phone and uh, here then it pops the up. The numbers guy, go ahead. All right, yeah, I'm the numbers guy, yes. <laughs> like Think of the following this. text. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. Mm -hmm. That's John one. 1, 1 through 3. Mm -hmm. That is... The God who created all that was created, the 200 sextillion stars and everything else, he did what? He shrank down, became a human baby, lived a sinless life, and then died on the cross, bearing in himself the penalty for our sins and evil so that we can have the promise of eternal life. Before us is the great truth. The grace given us in Jesus Christ on the cross. And what does God ask from us in return? Now all has been heard. Here is the conclusion of the matter. For fear, fear God. God, keep his commandments, and for this is the duty of all mankind. Mm. That's, a, that's a sublime passage. Man. It's like our yeah. time is gone. Yeah. Why and don't you say our closing prayer, sure. Brother James? Father in heaven, we're so thankful for uh, the Sabbath day. Thank you for your great love for us. We pray earnestly, Lord, for you. In the indwelling, we realize our nothingness without you. Be with those who are joining us online, we pray. Oh, Father in heaven, we miss them and we pray for your blessings to attend them. In a very special way, we think of those that are sick and suffering. But Lord, as we look at this lesson again, help us to be mindful um, of your grace 
the grace that you give to us. And also the importance of the law that you've given for us. Help us to embrace the, tr the truth that is found in, G in Jesus and, to, and then go out and tell the world, go out and live before the world that you are our King and our God. Be with us throughout this Sabbath day and thank you for this day. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And uh, we will uh, have a little break here for those of you especially who are online and are following us. Uh, I was even blessed Thank this you, last weekend to have a uh, privilege to meet somebody who said that they, uh, even though they lived out in Mangum, Oklahoma, that they tuned in to watch our uh, uh, mm. Sabbath schools and church. So, so the, we don't know who's there, but we do have an influence in the world. We'll see you in 15 minutes.